Hey everybody, before I start reading um, today's selection for Backyard Books, I just wanted to remind you that when the book is done, you can um, visit um, the link that I'm going to post in the video description below where you will find a corresponding activity packet to help you continue exploring um, the world of bats and ways that you can help them. There are even um, some instructions for a little bat craft for those that would like to do that. My daughters and I started this this morning. This is our mama bat, and there are two baby bats to go along with that. We're going to make ours into a mobile. Um, but there are a variety of things there that um, you can explore and find something that you enjoy. So don't forget about that, um, and I hope that you enjoy today's um, selection. I had Mother's Day in mind when I picked it because there are two important mamas in this story. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this edition of Backyard Books. Today's Backyard Book is Bat Count, a citizen science story by Anna Forrester, illustrated by Susan Detweiler. The sun is dropping behind the ridge and the red-winged blackbirds have quit their squalling, so I know it's almost time. Mom and Dad wash dishes while I gather twigs. When my hands are full, I carry them down to the fire pit and pile them into a little teepee. I'm allowed to build fires on my own. You know the way, Dodo, Mom says. Just keep an eye on our baby boys. The baby boys are my twin brothers, Jakey and Lou. They are three, but Mom still calls them babies. After I was born, it took a long time for any more babies to come. When mom found out she was having twins, she called it double luck. I'd never seen her so happy. The twins are digging for worms. They don't remember the counts. We started the bat counts after the twins were born. When I was little, mom used to sweep bat droppings from the barn once a week. She sprinkled them in her garden and swore they made her plants grow bigger. Once before the twins came, Mom and I spotted a mama bat hanging upside down in the hayloft, wedged into a gap between two boards. She hugged her baby tight with her wings. Both bats were small like mice, not scary at all. They looked a little fragile, really. Mom said, don't bother them, Jojo. Our barn is probably a maternity roost where mother bats come in summer to birth their pups. They only stayed for the warm months though, like the people in the cabin down in the hollow. Summer folks, mom called them. The bats slept through winter in caves and mine shafts with other bats from all around. The year the twins came, there were fewer droppings. Mom was busy juggling double bottles and double diapers and didn't give it much thought. Back then, mom only had time for the baby boys. The year after, there were even fewer, and she started worrying. The newspaper told how thousands of bats were dying in their winter caves because of a disease called white nose syndrome. But there's hope that some won't catch the disease or can maybe recover from it. The bat scientists began tracking them. They asked people to do counts when the bats fly out at night to feed and to fill out forms and send their numbers in. That year, we began our counts. The most we counted was 39 bats. The summer after that, we counted again, and there were just 10. And this year, when the bats first arrived in June, it wasn't much of a count at all. There was only one single bat. We didn't sweep up droppings once this whole summer. Mom said bats have one pup at a time, like people, just once a year. By midsummer, the pups, if there are any, will fly out alongside their mothers. So now, in August, we count again. If our barn really is a maternity roost and our bat has pups, we'll have two. And maybe the bats can recover. I strike a match and touch it to my twig teepee. The pile catches quickly and smoke puffs up. The screen door slams and mom and dad start down the driveway. Jakey and Lou drop their shovels and dash to meet them. While they ride piggyback down to the fire, 
I lay three logs over top of the flames. We lie down on our backs in the grass in a neat row. Me, then Mom, then Jakey, then Lou, then Dad. The bats usually fly out from a gap at the top of the barn on the side facing the pond. That's where we watch. We haven't been lying in the grass for more than five minutes when a bat, the bat, our bat, shoots out. My heart jumps and Mom squeezes my hand. Dad says in a hushed voice, Jojo, keep watching by the roof. I'll keep an eye on the sides so we know if she goes back in. Mom and I snuggle up close and lie still. We wait and wait. I wonder that the twins aren't more squirmy and then over the crickets, I hear slow, deep breathing. They are asleep. Dad whispers, our bat has flown back into the barn through a hole at the corner. We wait and watch. Mom sighs. Well, there is still one. The way she says it, I know that she thinks the count is done. Five more minutes, Mom, please, I whisper. Okay, she whispers back, but then it's time to take these baby boys into bed. I hold my breath and cross my fingers. Finally, mom nudges me. Okay, she says, it's time. I let out all my breath and a big sigh. And just at that moment, I see them. One, two, three small shadows fluttering out from the barn. Three. Mom, I shout whisper, did you see? She squeezes my hand. I did. There were three, Mom, three. Dad shakes his head and smiles. Wow. We lie by the fire a while longer, snuggled up before agreeing that the count is done. Mom and Dad each heave a baby boy up onto his shoulder and we start back up to the house. Mom, you were right, I whisper. Our barn is a maternity roost and there were three. That mama had twins. She sure did, Mom nods. She must be so happy, I say. Maybe next year, all three will come back and they'll have more babies and the same thing the year after that and the year after that. And by the time the twins are big, the barn will be full up again with bats. Mom puts her free arm around me. I hope so, she says, though I think that mama bat would be just as happy if she had one baby all by itself. And she hugs me. I hold the screen door open for everyone. And when I look back, I can just make out three tiny shadows zigzagging over the pond.